demanded that they go out and number Israel, which yep. they did. And the angel of the Lord came and slew 70,000. Yep. And uh, so anyone who has an objection to the census, uh, to being, to participating in that kind of a thing, can just, uh, as I did, when they came to the house and they said, uh, we're here with the census, blah, blah, and I said, I have no information for you. I have a religious objection. Mark that down. I have a religious objection. And go away. <laughs> because, <laughs> and they would say, well, how many bathrooms, how many toilets? Uh, I said, I have no information for you. Go away. And I have a religious objection. Mark that on your paper. Well, I think that is an excellent suggestion. And I, and I hope... Uh, because the census in Australia is coming up, what I'd like to do is get something up of a new review that refers to that particular example. I think it helps people to, to know. I always think that if people know a bit of a provenance, not just simply the way to handle it, it gives them a certain confidence. Would you agree? Oh, yeah. They cannot overcome a religious objection. It's the most powerful thing that there is. But the provenance of that scripture, which we know, is uh, is central in every one of their courts. Yes. Right. They, you know, I mean, they cannot cause you to participate in such a heinous act as as numbering Israel. Yes. No, I really appreciate that feedback. And and what we'll do is look to put something up. My answer was was based on my knowledge of its impact, more or less, on your status. But I think if uh, we can be handled in a much simpler way, as per the things you're suggesting, I think that a lot of people will find that very, very helpful. So I appreciate that. Thank you. I gave them absolutely no information. I wouldn't tell them who I am. I wouldn't tell them how many people lived in the house. I wouldn't tell them how many bathrooms there were or toilets or anything that they wanted to know. I just told them, get mm -hmm. off the property. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I appreciate it. And as you know... People are at different levels of knowledge and confidence. And, of course, the other thing we've got to bear in mind is that in different jurisdictions, there are sometimes slightly different approaches. In Australia, there are a number of things like compulsory voting where there is an absolute threat uh, given against people who choose not to participate. So I, I, I would like to take what you said away and see if we can put something up for people on, on uh, how they might choose to approach it. That's very good. Thank you. The Bible is everywhere on this planet. And uh, here in America, there is a federal public law, 97280-96-1211. That law is the only law that ever passed through Congress unanimously. Even the declaration of war against Japan after the Pearl Harbor attack did not pass unanimously. The only yes. law that ever did was Federal Public Law 97-280-96-1211. And that law says the Bible is the word of God. Mm -hmm. We should apply its teachings in our lives. It says among, amongst other things, but it says we should apply its teachings in our lives. And so well, with regards to the census and my religious objection, that's exactly what I'm doing. Well, I think, again, it's really important. I know that uh, there are similar um, statutes and examples within the Constitution and the original law in Australia, and I'm sure the same in other places. So, again, I think this is very important. And in all that we do, uh, it's to edify people's faith and belief uh, when, when certainly when people are approaching things from a position of... of um, of uh, uh, morality, and I, uh, I I think that's very useful information. So thanks again for letting us know that. Okay. Okay. Good on you. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you, thank you, Northeast Texas. That was well. That was a really good point because mainly what's being said there is that um, you know he is the creator is the same today, uh, yesterday, today, and forever. So. 
it when the Israelites were accountable for getting in to what they knew was wrong, then in their hearts, and then we're accountable. And that's the point coming across is that we have to be accountable for those decisions and standing up for what we know is uh, right and true. Well, absolutely. And I think just quickly, because I know that, um, you know, um, another, another call there, but all of this is about, if you, if you go and read what was just quoted there in, in terms of scripture and you talk about what we're doing now, then there are passages there that could have been written five minutes ago in terms of what we're dealing with today. We are dealing with those issues and those issues in a matter of faith and belief, in a matter of what is right and what is wrong, as never before. So I really appreciate that. And I've said this always, and I I think it's important, just quickly, that whenever I speak of subjects like the covenant of one heaven, I'm very mindful, very mindful, that at a first glance, people may feel that it may challenge their belief but I hope when people do take the time to read they realize that it is very much about a validation of faith an enlargement of faith um, and a strengthening of faith yes thank you Frank all right next on the phone line so we've got Greg Greg are you there hi Terry hi Frank this is Greg hi hi Greg I um, wanted to add a follow-up to uh, what Lynn had said earlier about voluntary volunteering. Um, it was my understanding that those that were drafted in World War II, Korea, and Vietnam, from at least the United States, um, when they would believe, when men believed that they were actually being drafted, they actually were brought up to a line, all lined up in a row, and then a drill instructor would tell everybody to step forward. And those people that stepped backwards um, were not inducted into the military and did not have to participate in the draft. And there were a lot of men who knew how to do that, but it never made much public knowledge. So just for you to know, so even though they called it a draft and made it like it was an obligation, there were many people, many men that knew to step back and not step forward. (laughs) So that's also part of the voluntary thing. Um, Frank, I have a question for you uh, regarding um, the, uh, I don't know if I can find it here, the prophecy at Fatima um, in 1917 yeah. from May 17th um, through October 17th. Um, I found last night was the first time I actually ever got any understanding of what this was about. I would read this uh, work of um, Tony Bushby. And anyways, when I when I read it, I finally got an idea that there was something here in light of the fact that the dates uh, six months from May 13th, always on the 13th of the month through October 13th, and the final event with 5,000 witnesses, some of which were, um, one, one of which is quoted here as a professor at a university there in Portugal. And I also find it very interesting that the culmination and the, and the evidence that was given was being done on October 13th, 1917, was virtually on the 400th anniversary of Martin Luther's posting to the Vatican or to the Vatican that they did not have the authority to rule the world. And then, of course, then whatever these messages are uh, that were put out, um, obviously one of those is, is that the Catholic Church had less than 100 years. And of course, being 2011 and 2017 being the 100th year, uh, it, obviously all that we're doing is playing a role uh, in this prophecy that I really had no clue about until yesterday or the day before. So my question to you is, do you, could you, would you elaborate on the three secrets that the Vatican has kept hidden about what happened there and how it relates to the possibility, one, of, of the, the, our bring, bringing forward the, our one heaven to uh, establish authority over the earth uh, and also um, the possibility of that there was an example of whatever this object is in the, in the heavens that was shown a sample of it by appearance of the sun coming down to these people staying there for 12 minutes and then rising back up again. Was there a correlation between that as well? Sorry to dump all that on you, but no, 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 that's all right. Look, I'll, what I'll do is I'll I'll paraphrase some of it now, Greg, and then then something we can do is is look forward to having a chat, and I'll give you a bit more okay. um, on a, on, a, on an off offline chat. But the the, the problem between the Miracle of Fatima and the Prophecy of Fatima being one of the 
few public prophecies that the Catholic Church has been prepared, except for the third, to uh, promulgate, is that there's evidence that the uh, surviving uh, um, child that ended up becoming a, a nun modified the um, prophecies leading up to World War II. And in fact, Pius used the second prophecy as part of the um, preparation for World War II. So there is, unfortunately, in at least the first two prophecies, an indication that what was published in terms of the uh, call for uh, uh, obedience and adoration of, of Mary was in fact uh, a heavily modified um, public announcement, propaganda announcement from the Vatican and not from the original. The one that they did not touch, surprise, surprise, is the one that they don't want to publish, <laughs> which is the third secret. <laughs> um, there is an indication that John Paul II was obsessed, completely obsessed in the third secret of Fatima and that when he had become aware of its contents as a Pope made it uh, almost in the back of his mind that he would be the last pontiff in bringing this forward. Now the third secret of Fatima ultimately is that the Pope, uh, that the that the last the days will come where the where effectively people will tear Vatican down, uh, that the Vatican will be destroyed by the people, and this is the most disturbing element of the prophecy, is that the people ultimately wake up to exactly what the Catholic Church, or I should call them the Roman cult, because they aren't the true Catholic Church, and I want to always make that clear. I am never, ever directing my comments towards someone who is a believer of Christianity or a Catholic or any denomination or any faith. The Roman cult is a very, very small group of people who hide within an extremely large organisation. And the Roman cult uh, is, is an elite uh, that uses the goodness of, well, over a billion Catholics against them. So the prophecy is that the Roman cult is dragged from the Vatican and the system ends. And, uh, well, uh, there's, there may be some truth to that because certainly people are waking up and are able now to make the distinction between their faith and the Vatican and say my faith in, uh, in uh, the Bible or my faith in Catholic teachings uh, I can make that separation from the Roman cult and this insidious uh, inability for these people to hold to account the abuse of children, uh, the poverty in Africa, and the wars and the corruption that they have overseen. So, yeah, I think the day is coming where very soon that the, uh, the Vatican will fall. Not the Catholic Church. I've never said the Catholic Church it will end, but certainly the reign of the Roman cult is coming to an end. Well, thank you. That would be, that would then tie in with what um, the whole point behind uh, One Heaven and Eucadia has been then by establishing a truthful system of, of canons uh, showing exactly how the system has been operating in fraud and is then establishing a positive uh, alternative system to free humanity. Um, then we're playing a part in this transition. And so, in essence, what's happening is it's the end of, an, of a systematized, uh, organized crime syndicate hiding behind yep. people's deep spiritual beliefs and their desire to do the right thing and to honor their oath and to then give them an opportunity to have an actual system that will allow them to live in honor and in actual true love and under the true uh, golden rule. So, yep, um, exactly couldn't be a better timing for everything right now, Frank. And then I guess the last thing I just wanted to say was that I, I do believe that when I, when I read this article, one thing I 